Applying number formats to a cell that contains numbers makes the number more recognizable. That is, if you have a number format that goes along with it, for example. What's the purpose of this cell? It's to uh, find the commission or multiply the total cells by this commission rate, which we could convert this from a general number to a percentage by coming up here on the Home tab again in the Numbers group and clicking on the percent symbol. Symbols are easily more recognizable than just basically a bunch of numbers without any formats applied to them. And you can see that once I applied the percentage to the cell, the number format group up at the top shows that when I have the cell selected, the current number format that's applied to it. Just like if I come over here to the font group, the current font that's applied to it in that cell is Arial in size 10. So you have the font format, and then you have the number format. And of course, you can always click on the drop down arrow and choose percentage from the list there. How about over here, we've got our sales for each employee for the months of January through April. Are we talking about dollars here or a different type of foreign currency? Go ahead and click and drag and select the range and you can quickly apply a number format to it. Come up here in the number group and then click on the dollar sign when you click on it. Well, if you hover over the dollar sign, it says that this is the accounting number format. It's not currency. Well, what's the difference between the two? Well, let me go ahead and hover in between two columns here, click and drag and stretch it open. The accounting format has the dollar symbol or sign aligned all the way over to the left hand side because when you're adding up numbers and accounting you don't want symbols to get in the way although you do want to know uh, what type of currency this is in well it's US dollars in fact if you want to leave it in accounting format you can come up here in the number group click on the counting drop down arrow and of course you have the euro the English pound click on that it updates it and keeps it aligned to the left and you can see up here that that's the accounting format applied to the range of cells here if I want currency or if you want to see the difference between accounting and currency, click on the drop down arrow and click on currency and it takes the symbol and moves it right next to it, a nice snug fit against the numbers there. And of course if I want to go ahead and collapse this column so it's back to its snug tight fit to the longest data within the column, just double click on it really fast and it will do a best fit or an auto fit. Now the features that you see up here in the number group are the more popular features. For example, you also have your decimal points if you want to increase the decimal range so you can get more detailed then you can go ahead and click on that if you want to decrease the decimal go ahead and click on that and it will remove that extra number down to two and of course you can go down to one in which case it's going to round up or round down this used to be well 110.25 so it rounded up let me go ahead and increase the decimal so you can see it uh, doesn't round anymore because we're working off of two decimals now like I said you've got the more popular features here if you need more you can of course go ahead and click on the expandable dialog box button and it will have a listing of all the categories on the numbers tab as you see when you click on the drop down list here the only difference between using the drop down list is that when you select something from the format cells window here from the categories down below is that you have more options over to the right hand side so for currency which is what I currently have selected and that's why it's pulling it up here it shows me the sample here and then how many decimal places of course I can decrease that just like I did when I clicked on the decrease decimal button here and then you can see that in the preview window and increase it you can choose the different symbols you can go Chinese or English Australia English Canada we'll go ahead and if we want to go back to none but I'm gonna go back to the currency dollar symbol here and then as far as negative numbers go if I go ahead and I type in the minus symbol because maybe somebody had negative commissions I know that doesn't make sense here but for the sake of what I'm trying to show you here, if you have a negative number, you, you can display it in one of several ways. You can have a minus sign, you can make it turn red, you can have it within a parentheses or a parentheses in red, which is accounting there when you have parentheses. So if I go ahead and I select that and click OK, it'll update all the cells to the negative number format if we have a negative number. For example, if I double click in this cell, type in the minus sign, hit enter, there's the negative number. Now, does Excel calculate that? Of course. Go ahead and select a, a couple of cells here and go down the stat bar. And what it's doing is it's adding a positive number here, 210.63, to a negative number, or at least the negative number format that we decided to use. And the difference between the two is 34.98. So it's subtracting 175 from 210. Of course, click and drag and select the range, right click, go down to format cells, and you can use the uh, standard minus symbol here, click OK. Instead of the color red that pops out there, that means, well, we're in the red. If you ever heard that term before, you don't want to see red. That means you're in the hole as opposed to being in the black. Unless, of course, being in the black, 
you use the symbol, that's not helpful because that's still a, a negative number there. But in any case, choose which uh, negative number format works best for you. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos. And for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.